Hello everybody, my name is Dude, and welcome back to Dream Daddy. Uh, I think we've dated just about everyone except Robert. Have we dated Robert? We have not. Let's date Robert. Once. Maybe twice, I don't know. Seems like that depends on how that goes. Internet gains sentence, sentience and decides to destroy us all, you... Destroy us all, you know it'll use this information against us, right? When a friend at night, you are most likely to make a deal in an alleyway. Have it go badly. Who's the cop? Was it... Was it Giacomo? I trusted Giacomo. If you had one thing to take with you on a desert island, what would it be? Gun. One of your turn-ons, don't talk to me. What did you want to be when you grew up? A grifter. What is your favorite movie genre? Italian neo-realism. What's your ideal date? Grave robbing. What? What do you never leave home without? At least four knives. I spend a lot of time thinking about... You re ever really look into a rabbit animal's... Eyes. I don't know if I want to date him, but whatever. We'll, we'll, we'll go for it. First impressions are everything. You can't beat the whammy bar. Nothing can beat reading in print. Uh, Robert was pretty nice. A little odd, but nice. And ruggedly handsome. We should hang out. I type out a message to him on Dadbook. Hey, Robert. Good seeing you again at the cookout. Want to grab a drink? I sit there for a couple seconds, hoping you'll message me back. Hey, it says that he read my message. I anxiously wait for a response. Watch cat videos on the internet. Why not? It's, it's a great place to do that. It's a great time to do that. I start down a rabbit hole of cat videos, and Robert quickly vanishes from my mind. I didn't realize how long I've been doing this, but by the time I watch my 30th cat video, Robert pops it back into my head. Jump back over to see if he has responded yet. Nothing. Well, I guess the guy's busy. Might as well make the best of my day. Doing literally anything. I get up, walk to the living room, and sit down and turn on the TV. Food channel. Oh, meat hell is on! Woo! Love me some good meat. You have ten minutes to cook a five-course meal that must include these ingredients. Steak, lemon meringue pie, paper clips, and a hammer. If you are unable to finish cooking, or if any of these ingredients are absent from the dish, we will release the wolves. Oh my god. I'm not kidding. Please help us. I lose several hours of whatever the hell that was. Sighing, I w get up and walk around my house. My stomach grumbles. Time for lunch, huh? Well, I guess it's time for old Chef Manderson to cook a gourmet delicacy. I walk over to the refrigerator and open the door, and then I see paper clips and a hammer. Guess I'm eating paper clips for lunch. Mustard chai. <laughs> Microwaves? No. You do not microwave eggs. Unless they're already, like, pre-cooked and frozen. But you don't microwave raw eggs. It's not a thing you do. The mustard chai. <laughs> I'm going for the mustard jar. It's too much work to make food. I reach into the back of the fridge and find an old mustard jar. Ooh, brown and spicy. This'll be a treat. I put in my first spoonful of mustard and immediately realize this was a mistake. I lean over the sink and drink some water straight off the faucet. Ah, mustard alone is not a meal. I only had some Parmesan. I kind of figured, but you know... I'm gonna go for something. My choices are three things. I might as well go for the funniest one. I sometimes just eat peanut butter straight from the jar. Spoon, of course, but like... Just plain peanut butter. I finish my snack and walk around the house some more. Bored. When's Amanda coming home? Oh, I just remembered something. When we were packing up the old house, we found an old basketball hoop that would hang off of the door. It would really bring the living room together. I wonder where I put that. I spent a couple minutes poking around the new place until I find it. After installing it above one of the doors in the living room, I'm ready to dunk. Come on and slam, and welcome to the jam. Come on and slam, if you want a jam. I take a leap from the free throw line and rocket that sucker down the net. The crowd goes wild, and welcome to the jam. Pull up the three from the three-point line, breaking ankles and sinking a fadeaway. I forgot the rest of the words to the song. No look behind the, ba the back hook shot. Everyone's on their feet. Something something Space Jam. 
It's your chance to your dance at the Space Jam! Alright. Managed to just barely defeat myself at horse before Amanda comes home. How we cook dinner together. We're proud of ourselves for not even coming close to burning down the house. Afterward, Amanda and I dig into a carton of ice cream over an episode of Chopped, Toddler Tournament. What you have in front of you is a molecularly deconstructed sweet potato with a brown sugar demi-gloss with cream friche, of course. This is literally a jar of baby food. The toddler immediately bursts into tears. <laughs> Are we bad for watching this? Yes. Just then, my computer dings. Huh? What's that? Oh, he probably just got a message. And I walk over to the computer and check dad book. It's a message from Robert. You up? What? Oh, what does that mean? What you doing? What am I doing? You're just chilling. Ah. Uh, this took a long time to uh, get going. I... Hmm. I don't think I want to go on this date with him after all. I guess just chilling. I type back just chilling. Amanda leads the G and hits send. Chilly. Let me make you look cooler. A couple moments pass by. Another message pops up. Hey, that means he wants to hang out. I know what that means, Amanda. But it's kind of late. Uh. Come on, Pops. Live a little. I am living with ice cream and traumatized toddlers. Uh. Well, it's your life, but I think you have a, you'd have a lot of fun tonight. You are trying to get to know the neighbors better, aren't you? Uh, fine. Whatever. I type back a message to Robert asking him for details, and he tells me to meet him at Jim and Kim's. Well, don't wait up for me. I never do. That's great. Thanks. Thanks. I guess. Throw on a nice jacket and run out the door. It's only a short walk to Jim and Kim's, and it's a beautiful night. Walk into the bar and see the usual crowd of barflies drinking beer and watching sports. I spot Robert at the back of the bar and wave hi as I walk over. Hey man, how's it going? Hey buddy. Oh, hi there, Skipper. Robert and Mary here? Uh-oh. Huh. I brought Mary along. Figured we need a drinking buddy. Oh, man, I was excited to get to know Robert a little better. I have to deal with this weird married lady making passes at me. Don't look so scared, kiddo. We're just having a drink. Hey. Yeah, speaking of which, I think it's time for the first round. What do you having? Hmm. Uh... I prefer something tropical. I don't think this guy's a whiskey guy, so it's, uh... Dead after my own heart, huh? Figured. Might as well try to impress our date a little bit. I don't know. I've not had a good beer. And, in all honesty, if I want to get drunk, I'll do straight liquor. Not saying drink. Not advocating drinking, though. So if I need to chill, I might as well just do something. Robert orders three shots of whiskey and passes them between us. Well, this is a, wasn't how I expected my night to be going. Mm. Use the bad decisions and relaxed moral motives, fellas. What have I got myself into? We all knock back the shots. I almost choke on the whiskey as it burns down my throat. Holy hell, that was a kick. I go for Robert and Mary, who seem like old pros at this. Robert grabs his jacket and throws it on. Let's get marching. What? Uh. The night's young, Chief. Come on, we're bar hopping. Oh. Alright. I leave that bar and start walking down the street. I still don't know this area of town very well, so I just follow Robert. So where are we headed? <laughs> Irish Ira drinking. It's an Irish pub. A good pun is the whiz key to my heart. Come on. Well, someone's not a fan of puns. Puns are the lowest form of humor, Jark. Try harder. Why don't you get good, scrub? Ouch, am I going to be the butt of the joke all night? Jesus, Mary, put your fangs away for a second. Thank you, Robert. Why is she here? Is she missing two of her fingers now that I see it? Now that I'm looking? Or does she normally have a wine glass there and it's just gone? We walk into Irish I Were Drinking. The bar is pretty much the same as Jim and Kim's, except for the old-timey Irish memorabilia on the wall. Oh god, this is very Irish. Next round, what are we having? Eh. Then. 
We've already had whiskey. Let's try something else. I like fruity Irish cocktails. Nope. I've noticed three more glasses of whiskey and he pops up a garish green booth. Harry slides in and saddles ne next to Robert, which makes makes me breathe a sigh of relief. Let's sip this one, why don't we? Suit yourself. Harry immediately downs her shot in one gulf and burps loudly. I don't put hair on your chest. You are truly the paragon of beauty and grace. Harry grabs my drink and sips on it. Hey! Jack, be a dear and get us another round, will you? I don't know how to process this evening at all. I get up and order another round of drinks from the bartender. As I head back, I see Mary and Robert having a lively conversation. Robert roars with laughter. I don't think I've seen this guy smile at all and laugh. Take a seat across the booth from them and pass out the drinks. Hey. So Edith's kid snuck in some pot brownies onto the table at the last bake sale, right? And I spot that little hemp sweat-shirted gremlin in the back in the act, so I go up to Edith with the baggie, and I'm about to tell her, and all of a sudden, she just freaks out at me. You're ruining the bake sale, she says. I should have been PTA president. Your roots are bad and blah blah blah. So what'd you do? You told her to have a brownie and make and take everything was good that everything was gonna be fine. <laughs> I guess that's funny. Politely follow along with the story. She ate three. <laughs> Wait, that's Danny. Oh I see the joke in this. More laughter. Okay, that was actually pretty funny. She called the cops and told them that time had stopped. <laughs> Mary looks directly at me. You smoke weed? What? Mm. You know, the devil's lettuce. I... Mm. I have two big fat blunts in my purse right now. Wanna blaze? Uh... I honestly wanna say no. But we did try to smoke oregano earlier. So... I don't know. Honestly, I'm kinda not digging this day. Can I bail? Can I just bail out? Where's the bail out button? Oh, I want to bail out. I'm... Mm, let's say no. This is going south really fast. I can't believe you would... I don't even know how you... This is a preposterous... Ugh. Robert giggles helplessly. Hey. I'm just kidding, cowboy. Mm -hmm. Off the kid, Mary. He might not be used to your brand of humor. Oh. Oh. Fine, fine. I also not really used to this kind of situation. I mean, I wanted to get to know Robert and not you. I don't know you, and you seem like a bitch. Just saying. We sit around and sip our drinks, people watching and cracking jokes. After a little bit of time, I begin to warm up to Mary. Oh god, no. I don't like Mary. Why, why would you warm up to her? Her jokes became much funnier and much less scary. It seems like she's not going anywhere anytime soon. I just wanted some alone time with Robert. I wonder if I can get her to leave somehow. Isn't Joseph wondering where you are? Lots of eligible bachelors around here, huh? Did you get the next round? You trying to ditch me, pal? I... no. Because if you're trying to ditch me, you can just tell me to scram. I just... No, no, it's fine. Jack wants alone time with his new best buddy, Robert. Read you loud and clear. The wingman breaks formation to pursue her with their prey. Mm -hmm. Now, if you fellows will excuse me, Mary needs to sink her teeth into a helpless boy. Go with God. Nice seeing you. Come on. Deuces, nerds. Well, fuck you, too. Were you... Was she your wingman? Really? It's like, I came to hang out with you anyway. I don't think you need a wingman so much as you need, like... Some, I don't, I don't know. I don't know what I'm trying to say here. I think he just needs to like chill. Is Mary of all people really, really, really? Am I the only one who doesn't like Mary? The character's weird. And, eh. Hey, she grows on you. Does she though? I feel like she kind of delights in making men suffer. Well, she does. What about her and Joseph? Mm. What about him? You know, they're married, and she definitely tried to get in my pants the other night. And gesture to her across the bar, and she's making goo-goo eyes at that young guy from before. It looks like he's being held hostage. Ah, oh, that's just the thing she does. She's harmless. Hello to the boys she's hanging off of. 
Poor kid looks like he's seen war. <laughs> Robert lets out a hearty laugh. <laughs> yeah, I got him to laugh. Ah, oh, man. You know I pegged you for one of those straight lace types. Oh, don't worry. I got pretty wild back in my day. Mm. Still got a little wild in you? I have a child I need to care for. <laughs> I mean, even my child is wild. But honestly, this date was kind of awkward, so I still kind of want to bail. But whatever. I got so much wild to me, I've, like, I've got a whole safari in here. Just really wild all the time. Uh-huh. Well, you, I don't care, man. I don't care what you think of me. This date was going south the moment I started going, we started, you know? Mary? Really? Really? I don't care about oppressing you anymore. Robert orders a couple more rounds of shots. I gulp. What am I getting myself into? They can go shot for shot. There's only one way to look cool here. I grab the cl shot closest to me and down it. Robert looks impressed. He takes his shot and knocks it back. That's one. So... What do I even talk about? He's so cool and he probably hates small talk. He's not really that cool. Uh... Sour things. I hate small talk. Okay. Too many people. This isn't necessarily you. But too many people have... People think that I, they have to fill the dead air with noise. Personally, I think they're afraid of the silence. Or they're afraid of what the other person is going to think of the silence. Okay, that I can respect. Oh. If you want some unsolicited advice, just learn to be comfortable with silence. Mm -hmm. Nothing wrong with two people sitting in silence and drinking whiskey. Oh, alright. I... Okay, yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. I can respect that. Still don't like that you... Your wingman was Mary, though. There's so many better people here, man. Robert and I sit in silence and drink whiskey. I take in the rest of the bar. Patrons laughing, playing darts, spilling beer. Mary giving the hard sell to that young man. The young man pretending he got a phone call from one of his friends. Eh, silence is nice sometimes. So you ever kill a man? I chuck on my drink. Excuse me? You know, watch the life drain from someone's eyes. It's not just their life, you know. It's their hopes and dreams fading away. Every moment and experience they've ever had, gone. Uh, no. Great, me neither. <laughs> Something tells me he's killed a man. Robert knocks back for his shot and motions me to do the same. I reciprocate. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. Relax. I laugh nervously. Or am I? I laugh nervously again. Oh, I'm totally kidding with you. Are we not? Nah, I'm just kidding. Where am I? We sip more whiskey and people watch some more. Mary has her sights set on another man after the one other one excused himself to the bathroom and I assumed crawled out of the window. Gosh, this whiskey's hitting me hard. Gosh, this whiskey's hitting me hard. You betcha. Robert gets up out of the booth, shouldering his jacket. Let's roll! Sorry, whiskey. Inside voices. Oh. Let's roll. Wait, what about Mary? Brother, Mary's gonna be just fine. Look over at Mary, who's lying on the bar in front of some poor sap. She's singing happy birthday to him while he insists that it's not his birthday. Oh, thank fuck she's gone. <sighs> Make her way out of the bar and back onto the street. I'm trying my hardest not to stumble, but man, that sidewalk is just coming right at me. I hope Robert doesn't notice me tripping over my own feet like this in the first... This is the first time I've ever been drunk. Where to? You'll see. What? Follow Robert through the street lamp spotlights until we eventually arrive at a rundown strip mall. There's a beauty salon, a sex shop, a computer repair store. It looks like it's been closed for ten years. And finally, a liquor store. Wait there. I'll be right back. After a minute, Robert returns with two wine bottles and brown paper bags. He hands one to me. Cheers. Oh, uh, we're just gonna curb drink then? Thought we were gonna bar hop. Or is that. Are we done bar hopping? This isn't a curb and drink, so motions for me to do the same. This is really not where I expected the night to go. Take a sip. White Zinfandel? What? Nothing. I just wasn't expecting. It is delicious, fruity, and refreshing. Don't judge me. I wasn't going to. I start to say something. Think of this lecture about valuing silence earlier, and stop. Let's throw rocks at shit. 
What? Robert suddenly hurls a rock at a stop sign. The ding echoes through the empty parking lot. That felt good. He presses a stone in my free hand. Now you try. Uh, I don't know with feeling. Look at the rock in my hand, and look at the stop sign. Look at the rock, look at the stop sign. Look at the rock, look at the stop sign. I know it has to be done. I got a problem for a th with authority. I got a problem with authority! <laughs> I hurl the rock at the sign. It sails over the stop sign right into the window of a parked car, leaving a crack. Dude, run. Yes, hi, my, my name is Dude Run. Hi, how you doing? Hi, how you doing? I leap up and dart at the nearest alley, wine in hand. I can hear Robert's footsteps behind me. After I'm sure I'm far enough away from the cracked window that I am no longer culpable for this heinous crime, I stop to catch my breath. And when we strike rock throwing from the to-do list. Agreed. Suddenly, my stomach growls. Oh man, I'm starving. Let's get pizza. Can't argue with that. Where's well, good around here? Actually, I don't even care if it's good. It just needs to be edible and in my mouth in the next five minutes. I know just the place. Is it a pizza buffet? Please tell me it's a pizza buffet. I have not had one in years. <sighs> Specifically, Hungry Howie's. I mean, he used to go there a lot. Anyway. Follow Robert through a maze of alleys and street side streets until you eventually end up in front of a tiny hole in the wall pizza joint. The bright neon red sign reads, Pete's 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 Pizza Pizza. Good God, that's hard to say. Ta da! I can see a few exhausted looking workers behind the counter tossing dough and pulling piping hot pizzas right out of stone ovens. My stomach rumbles again. I go up to the counter and get ready to order. Can I get two slices of Hawaiian pizza? Oh wait, Jerk, you're cool with pineapple on your pizza, right? You know... I'm not... I'm really not. I don't like pineapple on my pizza. You can have it just fine. I don't care. Just not on mine, please. I'm not judging you for liking it, because tastes differ from person to person. I'm just saying I like mine savory rather than sweet. And I'd rather have, at least I like my pizzas savory, rather than sweet, so whatever, we'll try it. We'll just say yes, because I, I can eat it, it's not what I, it's not my first choice. Or any of my choices. We'll wait a minute for our pizza to come out of the oven. I'm practically drooling at the smell. The cashier hands us each a giant slice on a paper plate, so saturated with grease that I'm worried it will fall apart. We take our pizza outside and wander through the alleyways as we eat. I take a bite. It's absolutely delicious. Pineapple is truly the... No. 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 Not coming out of my mouth. Not saying it. You said it. Yeah. Jark said it. I didn't. I stopped myself, though. Man, I feel way better now. You and me both. We hear noise coming from a slightly ajar door in the alleyway. Robert looks at me excitedly. Got any more of that wild in you? So tired, but... I love my daughter and I should go home to make sure that she's alright. I don't know if I like where this date's going. I really don't like where... Let's, let's be responsible. Eh, ah, well that's a shame. Get you around, Robert. Head home and make sure to drink a glass of water and have a multivitamin before bed. I probably made the right decision. I think. Honestly, I think I did. I'm not a big fan of Robert. Don't know if I'll keep dating him. Sorry to say this to people that may not may actually like him. What was that? Did you just say he'll kill me? Welcome. You got that. That's rude. Anyway, I'm gonna end the episode here, so thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. Leave a like if you did, subscribe for more. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And thank you to Shrill, Laviel, and Star Trouble for supporting me on Patreon this month. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye bye.